everybody. We're going to get started here. I'm Alex Sunlaff. I'm a career assistant at the Career Resource Center and welcome to What Can I Do with an Economics Major. Um, we have some great panelists here tonight who are going to chat a little bit about their career path and what they've done with their econ majors. So I'll let them introduce themselves and um, speak about themselves for a little bit and then we'll open it up for questions. And that'll go till about 8 and then you can feel free to stay back and chat with anyone that you want to, and yeah, we'll get started here. So Julie's going to start us off. Thank you. There we go. Can everybody hear me okay? Um, I'm Julie Donay. Um, I'm a 97 graduate of St. Ben St. John's from the Economics Department. Um, I was a major in econ with a minor in management. Um, my first job after graduation was actually for a local company here in St. Cloud called Process Pro Software. Um, I spent 12 years at that company um, working from the ranks of more of an operations role to spending um, probably about the last eight years that I was there. I focused a lot on human resources management and also product management, kind of overseeing the development of the software package that this company um, had made and developed locally. Um, at the time that I had left there, I was in an executive position, um, very much enjoyed it, but was looking for another change. Um, around the same time, actually it was in 05, I went back to school at St. Cloud State University and obtained my MBA, Master's in Business Administration degree. Um, so very much a business focus um, was kind of the track that I took with my, my econ um, knowledge and skills. Um, about four years ago, though, I switched and I moved into the healthcare arena. I'm still focused on business management. I'm an administrator for a uh, private practice uh, called Physicians Neck and Back Clinics um, in Sartell, and we focus on um, providing care for patients who suffer from chronic neck and back pain. I'm not a clinician. I didn't change that type of field, but managing the business aspects of it. Um, and I really enjoy it. It's a small environment, but it's a really broad focused position in terms of overseeing really everything from a day-to-day -day basis from still focusing on HR, but I handle all the financials, I handle marketing, um, really, you know, all day-to-day -day things that would be associated with the business. Um, that's kind of what I enjoy about what I've had the opportunity to do, just getting to see all aspects of the business from everything coming in the door to everything going out the door. Um, and I think some of the things that I found is um, advantageous to uh, my education in economics was really those analytical skills that you can take with really in so many areas of business. And I'm sure the others will have things to share too, but um, whether it's on the financial side or just maximizing resources and people and um, being able to develop relationships with people as well. But um, the analytics piece, I think, is kind of that, that core thing that has really stayed with me through all those, these years. So. Hi everyone, I'm Christina Nessie. I'm a 2009 graduate of St. Ben's and St. John's as an economics major and political science major as well. Um, kind of battled that one out back and forth and found myself in a, a couple different degree programs before ending up there and can happily say and honestly say I think that was um, one of the best choices I could have made being an econ major. I'm not sure if you're in the in the area of your lives of being influenced to choose or not, or just looking at the, the path following it. But if I would give one piece of, or be the propaganda for the department, I would say you're, you're making a good choice by going that direction. Anyways, so um, I've been out of school for about four years. Uh, the first two and a half that I was out of school, I worked for a company called Hardwick Day in the Twin Cities. It's a really small consulting company. Um, and what we did is actually, um, very instrumental to how we are here and how a, an institution operates. Um, we worked on essentially their optimization or private college optimization models for enrollment and financial aid. I can see eyes shutting at that idea already. So anyways, uh, <coughs> following that, I decided um, to head back to graduate school. I'm currently a master's candidate at the Humphrey School at the University of Minnesota. I have one semester left four or five months of one semester left, not that I'm counting. Anyways, um, and so I'm studying urban planning and focusing on transportation planning, which has actually been um, a pretty strong passion of mine while I was an undergrad, still within the economics department, um, and throughout those couple of years working at my previous job. 
Um, so I also work at a consulting company now in transportation planning, and that doesn't really tell you a lot other than I plan transportation. Um, but a lot of what I do is focused on looking at the costs and benefits of implementing different projects, whether it's a roadway project, um, building different transit networks, um, the social and economic impacts of, of those types of projects, and how we invest our money. Um, so kind of just to echo what was already said, I think one of the, the strongest things that stuck with me um, as a grad student especially, and hanging out in the economics classes I'm now taking, <laughs> and also in my career, uh, is definitely the analytical set of skills that I um, really had a foundation given to me within the econ department. Um, so taking <coughs> regression analysis courses, um, the quantitative methods, just trying to think of how the courses are named and they're a little bit different than mine right now. Anyways, so anything that you can spend um, digging in data and looking at analytical ways of um, analyzing whatever specific area you're interested in, I would highly recommend. Another thing that I thought was extremely beneficial, especially for my first couple of years, was taking a couple of computer science classes. Um, that logic of looking at how programming is done and how you can combine those analytical skills um, with the logic of creating an application in Excel, for example, um, has really been instrumental and kind of set me aside from some of my current classmates and getting the job that I now have um, and was also, like I said, very helpful for that first job too. Uh, hello, my name is Nick Sanner. I'm a O2 grad of St. John's, uh, the lone Johnny on the panel here. <laughs> um, I started my career uh, down at the Mayo Clinic. I uh, worked in healthcare ever since I graduated. I uh, worked as a finance analyst uh, at the Mayo Clinic for uh, about seven years. And about three years into it, maybe uh, two to three years into it, ended up on a project. Um, <clears throat> implementing or replacing our general ledger accounting system, payroll system, uh, HR system, and that, that project lasted for four years. So uh, when you have a, an employer that you know, has over 50,000 employees and uh, several locations and, and uh, you know, six or seven different hospitals, uh, it's a big task. And so that introduced me to the world of projects and project management. <clears throat> um, ended up with, you know, probably three or four different roles within that project over, over about a four-year span, uh, whether it was just you know, coordinating a testing phase of the project or uh, leading different project groups or uh, implementing different pieces of the software to come up uh, before others. Um, after that, I, I worked in a department called Planning Services for uh, just about two years at Mayo. Uh, worked on financial statement creation and, and other projects, but uh, everything kind of had a, a project or, or software implementation feel to it. Um, now, about three years ago, uh, my wife and I moved back up to the St. Cloud area. Uh, she graduated with her master's degree and, and took a job as a nurse practitioner uh, at a small family practice clinic, and so she said, let's go back up and, and be close to grandparents and that kind of thing. We have, we have two small kids right now. Uh, and so I said, all right, well, I'll look for a job. And the one, one of them that I found was uh, at the St. Cloud Hospital, our, our Centric Care Health System, as a project manager. And I thought, well, this is basically what I've been doing. I wasn't called a project manager at the time, but I um, thought, you know what, why not give it a shot? And uh, interviewed, got the job, and, uh, and I love it because it, it, it um, I, lo I love the variety of it, you know, we, we do a lot of different projects, whether it's uh, focused on the technology side, whether it's implementing uh, electronic medical records or different pieces of our uh, electronic medical record system. Um, you guys might hear this term uh, over the next couple of years. Uh, I'm working on the project now for the whole health system to um, bring us to uh, ICD-10 compliance, so it's the, the new code set. So when doctors uh, uh, code their procedures or, or their diagnoses, they use a code uh, that's then translated into uh, billing terms so they can bill it. Uh, so it's, it's where the revenue is generated from, this other healthcare uh, folks would know. So uh, that's a big one. And it, really, every, everything revolves around um, 
you know, just the planning and the implementation stages. So, you know, we were talking a little earlier about, you know, I remember sitting in a chair like you guys were uh, 10 years ago and, and thinking, you know, I don't, I don't want to get a degree in, in uh, accounting because I don't want to be an accountant. I don't, I don't want to, you know, be a tax accountant or be an auditor. Well, looking back, that wouldn't be a bad degree to have because you don't have to be an accountant. Uh, and I think that's the tough thing for, for an econ economics major is, you know, how many uh, economists are there, uh, or, or at least high profile, uh, besides the, the ones we have sitting in this room. But, um, you know, most of us, we end up in business or, or, or we end up in, uh, you know, the, the finance world. And it, it's, it is, it's that analytical thinking skills, it's the problem solving skills. Uh, I think that you learn from a background in econ that, um, that are really valuable. To you. So. Hi, my name is Kelly Werner. I graduated in 2003. Um, after I graduated, I got into the world of finance. I didn't have any connections in that area, so I started as a bank teller. <clears throat> um, kind of worked my way up from there. Uh, started off as teller, moved into the operations area where you balance general ledgers, help customers with kind of all the back end type banking things that people think are done automatically. Um, from there I moved into lending and I got to make uh, decisions for the bank regarding who, what customers got loans. Um, after that, the president asked me if I would be interested in being his assistant, so I moved up to uh, the president's assistant. Um, that wasn't a full-time job, so I also took on HR with the caveat that I would get an HR education. So the bank sent me back to school, paid for my MBA, um, with it, with a HR concentration. Um, from there, I took on the role of <laughs> HR manager. Um, after that, I was recruited by the insurance firm that the bank worked with for their benefits. Um, and that was about four months ago, so I am now in the world of insurance. Um, it's been a great career path. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, some of the specific things I think that have helped with my with my career path, um, looking back at some of the classes, um, macroeconomics, it was great to be able to read the newspaper and know, hey, GDP, the rate of GDP is slowing. Okay, so maybe businesses aren't going to be looking for as many loans. Maybe we don't need to hire a new lender. And I could make recommendations based on what I was seeing in the news. Um, saving the bank tens of thousands of dollars in benefits and, and salary. So that's maybe one specific class that, that really helped me. Also, um, Econ 384, I know you guys are all really looking forward to that class. <laughs> Is it still Econ 384? Okay. Um, the president would throw projects at me. I would have <clears throat> no idea where to even start on them. Um, but Econ 384 kind of gave me the background and, and at least an idea of, okay, start with a spreadsheet, start with this, start by researching, research, 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 research. And from there I was able to make presentations, I was able to make presentations that the president then gave. Um, so that was also a great class. Um, right now for my job I also have to give presentations. So I know you guys are all really looking forward to the presentation you have to give in front of everyone's parents. Um, but that was a great experience too. So um, from here I think we're going to open it up for questions. Is there such a thing as typical? <laughs> um, every day for me is uh, very different. I could be working on one project at one minute and the next I won't get back to that project for another week. Um, really driven by day to day. Um, for me it's what do my staff need? If they have an issue coming up with the computer system, you know, we need to address that. If we have a patient issue that um, for some reason I need to get involved with, you know, I get pulled into that. Um, it can very much vary from day to day, but anywhere from working a full day behind my computer, working on spreadsheets and analyzing data, um, whether it's financial reports or just business volumes, patient visits, things like that, so we can balance staffing ratios and things like that. I can work on that. Um, if we're hiring, I might be in the mode of recruiting and, and putting benefits packets together, things like that, information to promote our clinic. 
um, on the marketing side. One week I might be focused on um, you know, promoting ourselves externally. How do we get our name out there for recognition? So it's more of that marketing role. Um, finding opportunities where we can get involved in the community to whether promote you know, educational events or things like that and planning, whether myself gets involved or I have resources that can help with that too, um, really just depends. So. I hate to have, again, the, the same answer, but uh, I'm in a, a little bit different situation because I, again, also in grad school, so my typical days are very atypical <laughs> um, and just kind of crazy right now. But all things aside, um, my days at work are also um, very multidimensional, I guess I'll call it, um, in a lot of different ways. So uh, a lot of the clients that my, my company um, has projects with are kind of based in local governments. So um, we're doing things all across the board from preparing something um, that's kind of an overview of a project that we're proposing, say, rebuilding a trail or um, another road um, in a small town. So we're preparing materials that are presentable to the public or a city council, for example. Um, so we have some studies that are working with like the county level government or the regional government um, and planning organization in the Twin Cities called the Metropolitan Council. Um, so I guess my, my theme there is um, there's a, a fair amount of kind of crafting a message and I mean that in a, a very positive manner, <laughs> not what it might sound like anyways. Um, so crafting a message from this very um, analytical and detailed information and making it presentable to a public so A, you can convince them that your proposed pro project or the project that you're um, researching into is one that is wise to, to take on in the future um, and B, so it's just understandable to them and um, as was mentioned a, a second ago, the Economics 384 course is really, um, really beneficial because it really does challenge you to present your research and your research project in a way that's consumable to kind of a general audience, um, no matter what their background is. And so that's a pretty solid center of my, my job. That doesn't really say anything about my day. <laughs> my days can go back and forth from spending eight hours at, behind a computer working on spreadsheets, analyzing data, doing a lot of um, research that I am doing by myself and am self-motivated to do. Um, and I have some days where, you know, I spend a minute at my computer and seven hours in meetings, interacting with clients, presenting, again, these projects to the public, uh, working with the public in different types of settings, like working on design ideas for what um, landscaping could look like for a partic particular street front or um, whatever the, the project might be. So again, all over the place um, in the best way possible. I don't think that I could sit for 40 hours a week for four weeks straight, <laughs> um, but three weeks straight and one week of public meetings, I think has been a good balance for me. Uh, yeah, I think that would be uh, similar in my experience. Uh, you know, I definitely don't have a, a standard day. <clears throat> uh, and if you're looking for something that uh, is going to constantly challenge you and um, you, you know every I don't say every every day but certainly every uh, every quarter uh, it, it almost feels like a new job for me because it depends on the project you're assigned to uh, I work with all different departments across the the hospital and health system so one project I might be working with uh, the nursing department um, you know implementing we implemented a, a barcode scanning uh, technology that would scan the patient's armband and then scan the medication to make sure that uh, you know you were safely administering medications. Where the, you know the, the next uh, six months later or four months later, you could be working on a project related to, to hospital billing, and then uh, four months later, you could be working with a, an affiliate hospital, bringing bringing them live on an electronic medical record. So everything's different, uh, you know, by the by the year, by the quarter, by the month, uh, and certainly by the day. So. Uh, a typical day, I, I could be I could be in uh, six hours of meetings, uh, meeting with all different levels of the organization, from executives to um, you know data analysts uh, or nursing staff, um, or spend half the day at my computer working on spreadsheets or status reports or uh, you know presentations to uh, executive leadership, presentations to uh, to nursing directors and things like that. So uh, it, it's certainly all over the board. Um, 
So I, I would stress if, if you're looking for, uh, for a role or a, a position that uh, you, you get to do different things and, and every day truly is different, um, you know, that, that project realm might be something to look into. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's certainly not for people that, that like the, uh, the status quo. They like to feel comfortable with, you know, their five or six operational tasks that they do uh, on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis. So. Um, the other thing, I wouldn't say I do it on a daily basis, but um, I didn't mention before that I've got a certification called Project Management Professional. It's, a, it's called a PMP certification. Um, and a lot of what I do in my job right now is try to educate different people or departments on uh, the merits or the values of managing a project instead of just, you know, all right, what are we going to do? We want to implement this system, you know, let's just get working on it, let's call the vendor up uh, and, and start installing it. Well, you know, you should go through a planning phase, you should, you should create a project charter, you should, uh, you know, you should use some standard sets of methodology that uh, are, are proven to help projects succeed. So a, a, a big part of my job right now is, is just trying to be a champion for uh, that, that process within the organization and, and just trying to grow that. I think the one thing we have in common is we don't really have a typical day. Um, same thing for me, I'm all over the board. I might be helping a client renew their insurance plans, um, putting together an analysis for them. I might be putting together a wellness program for them. So same thing, I might spend four hours at my desk and then the other four hours of the day out visiting clients just depending on whatever they need. So. I knew I was definitely interested in finance, so I applied for mostly financial jobs and kind of had to take the first one that came along because of the economic situation at the time. There wasn't a ton of options. We were in a recession when I graduated, so. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I would, I would say I was in that boat. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I mentioned before, you know, uh, especially with econ, I think it, or, or business management, you know, there are so many options out there, and I think if you just present yourself as a, uh, you know, employable young individual, <clears throat> uh, you know, keep your mind open and, and something will happen. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think I had a job secured by December of my senior year, not to scare anybody if you don't have something. I kind of lucked in, I, I kind of lucked out, uh, you know, went to a job fair, and it was actually uh, uh, an administrative training program through the finance department at Mayo. Um, so ended up in that path not knowing anything other than that my wife was a nurse and, and she wanted to be, you know, work at Mayo and, and so I thought, oh, that might work. Uh, you know, 10 years later, I can't see myself working in any other industry than healthcare, you know, for the next five years until I retire. <laughs> I like that life plan. I would like a 15 year work span and <laughs> hold on. Um, so I'm a bit more of, I think, an example of someone who had tested the water in one industry and ended up, as, as I mentioned, moving into another. Um, I knew that I really loved data and analysis, and that sounds so geeky and dry, but I think you probably can all relate to that, I hope. Anyways, um, so that's where I was. I was at an, um, in an internship my second semester of my senior year at the Minnesota Private College Council, which is kind of the, the lobbying organization and fundraising organization for the private college system um, within Minnesota, St. Ben's and St. John's included. Um, and they had a connection with the, the employer that I worked with initially. Um, people had former positions here and there, and the world is so much smaller than you might think. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyways, so I ended up there. Um, like I said, I I had kind of um, had this idea that I was really interested in, in transportation economics um, and in urban planning before I went this other path working for the, the private consulting company in financial aid and admissions. Um, and I, you know, I just kept 
testing that out and getting some experience, which is it's so valuable no matter what you do. And I don't, I don't mean that. I don't mean that in the sense that, you know, your first couple of years, whatever, it's just about the experience. That's not the case either. Um, but you're going to get something valuable out of whichever direction you choose. And if anything, it, you know, it points you in a better, more pointed direction in the end. Um, so I guess my, my thoughts there are that don't try not to stress too much about a specific industry if, if that's kind of what you're wavering about is, you know, I have these five choices, which one's going to be the best. You'll learn so much about yourself in your first however many years out of school. Um, you'll get there, I promise. Um, I didn't have a job right after graduation. Um, I think it was probably two to four weeks after graduation before I had um, secured an offer. Um, but with, you know, the broad scope that economics and management, again, I knew business was of interest to me, but at one time I had planned on focusing on finance, um, financial planning, which is actually um, my original undergraduate minor, um, and then I switched more into management. Um, so it was difficult, you know, as we've kind of talked about, if you go to school to be an accountant, you know exactly, you can look for the job title, the job specific that you're going after. This was a little bit of a challenge, admittedly, for me, too. I still, to this day, say, what do I want to be when I grow up? I'm still saying that, and I'm much older than the rest of you. Um, my advice on that is look for businesses that are appealing to you. For me at that time, I was very interested in computers and technology, and, you know, it was before the Y2K excitement. You know, Maybe so, you know. <laughs> Anybody else remember that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so there was a little bit of buzz going around for me at that time. Um, but again, you know, maybe focus on those interests or, or those industries that are interesting to you um, that you might have a passion for. My other advice is over apply because if you get interviews with businesses, I don't think there's any better place where you can gain more information about a specific position until you're in that interview. And you can have that opportunity to ask that <coughs> employer those questions about the role that you're going to learn a lot more about that company, that role, and about yourself just through that process. To me, the interviewing and the job hunting, it's a journey. It's a search and it's not a real <coughs> finite process. I think you'll learn a lot along the way and, and you'll hopefully find the one that excites you the most. I'll say, just to add one more thing too, <clears throat> um, I don't know that I mentioned this the first time, but I also have my, my MBA, uh, I got it through St. Thomas, maybe that's why I forgot to mention it. <laughs> but, but I think that, I think that um, it, over your first two, three years, I'd say just, just get a job, get any job, because any type of experience that you can get is going to be helpful, even if you don't, you don't see it on paper or you don't think it's going to be valuable. Um, and I think all of us probably went back to school to get our master's degree two, three, four, five years after we had been working. And that's also another thing I would recommend. You know, don't go right into it. I mean, if you can, you know, great. But there's a lot of value in bringing some of that real work experience into an MBA program. I think you get, you get a lot more out of it. <clears throat> and you might get it paid for. Yeah, that's helpful. And I think, too, yeah, just getting your foot in the door is huge. Once you're in the door, you can show what a hard work you, you are, how smart you are. You know, it, it just opens so many doors for you, so. <clears throat> Get extra credit for asking a question, right? <laughs> <laughs> what would you guys say is one of your best or worst <clears throat> things about your job? Well, I, I would say the, the thing I like most about my job, um, <clears throat> it, it, I mentioned it before, but it's just that uh, the variety um, and the autonomy I get within my role. Uh, and again, I, I equate that back to, you know, economics, really you're, you're learning how to learn, I think, uh, mm -hmm. in, in that degree. And, uh, you know, m more so than nursing, you know, you, you go and you take your exact classes and, and then you go to the bedside and you display those skills, you know, same with accounting and some other, other degrees, but, you know, something like a mathematics major or an economics major, you know, you're learning, you're learning how to learn and I, and I still do that today. You know, a lot of times I'll just get a project dumped on my desk and here you go, figure out how to do this and, and uh, you know, the CIO or whoever else is, is giving us the work doesn't have time to, to hold your hand and, and 
you know, get you to the end of the project. So you kind of figure out how to do that. Um, the worst thing about my job, uh, probably just, you know, how, how many demands there are, how many, how, how many things we're supposed to do, and I, you guys are probably all in the same boat, but, you know, we have probably 300 project requests in our database right now, uh, and four, four or five project managers to manage them. So, you know, it's, and, and that's, that's the same, uh, probably in any, in any role, but, um, you know, just feeling like you can never do enough, probably. Uh, I probably can't pinpoint the, the thing that I love the most about my job, um, and a lot of that is directly related to the fact that I'm in grad school and working in the desired field that I wanted, so I'm just very happy to be in that position. But uh, one of the things that I do enjoy quite a bit is the ability to already have the skill set to do the research that I need to figure out a problem and maybe approach it differently than someone that doesn't have an economics background. So again, whether that's my background in regression analysis that I've been able to really cultivate in the last few years um, and has really kind of set me in a different path in grad school or it just my background and kind of confidence and experience with working with any data set that's kind of thrown in front of you, you know, no matter the project or the, the, task, the task at hand or whether you've seen this data set before or anything, um, again, having that experience and the confidence is really helpful. So anyways, um, being able to do that research day to day and um, really figure out my problems um, in a different light than some of my coworkers is really something, and I don't mean that in a relative sense, but just having those tools to be able to really dig into problems and um, solve them creatively is uh, one of the things that I really enjoy. Um, I had a, a dislike at the top of my head <laughs> that it just escaped me. Um, consulting as a, a private industry is, um, no matter what industry you're actually consulting for, is usually pretty demanding and that, that definitely rings true in the couple of positions I've had. I frankly, when I left my first job while I was still in grad school, um, a week before I got my current job, I told myself I'd never work in consulting again, but here I am. So the reality of that is it's uh, where a lot of jobs are. And um, I will refine that more by saying that um, working within the public sector, so working on pro projects that are applicable um, to the public realm. So like I said, road projects, transit systems, things like that. Um, and out of the private sector, there are a lot of jobs that um, are in consulting companies and working on these public projects. So the reality is there are jobs there, um, but one of the most trying things about it is it's very based on politics and funding on a year-to-year -year basis. Um, so politics really drives my job and kind of puts a lot of worry into people that next year there, there won't be this um, $2 billion transportation package at the federal or state level um, funding the work that we do day to day. And from my experience so far, a lot of that worry <laughs> it hasn't rung true. Um, but uh, looking back five or six years or even uh, more recently than that, it's the, the worry of it being a cyclical industry is um, pretty realistic and a lot of people lost their jobs. And, in planning and engineering and architecture in the last four or so years. Um, and a lot of companies are just bouncing back from that right now. So well, the long and short of that is uh, the jobs are there now, but it's pretty volatile. So that gets scary, but um, you kind of have to ride that out if you're working for the public sector in a private company. Um, my best days, I think, are the ones when I can help solve a problem for something, whether it's just something for the team, or it's maybe a bigger problem related to healthcare reform, and we're analyzing the changes that are coming through, and how is that going to impact our clinic, and you know, different things. If I can come up with a solution, analyze a problem, and come up with a solution that whether it makes my job easier or somebody else's job better, easier, faster, um, those are the days I like the most. Uh, the days I like the least, and I've had um, unfortunately a few over the years, um, but. Any time I have to let somebody go, um, whether you know I've been through layoffs, I've had to let somebody go because of downsizing in, in work volumes, or just terminating somebody because their performance wasn't uh, meeting expectations. Those are tough days. Um, I don't, 
it's the human part of it for me that gets um, to be difficult on those days. Um, the economics piece of it, though, I think how that helped carry through, you know, when looking for a different job, I think the analytical piece, as we've kind of talked about, getting your foot in the door. I think um, my advice for you that are close to graduating, you know, soon be getting into the workforce, the other piece of it is to always, always focus on relationships and working well with others. Um, I don't know if any of, I mean, there, there are definitely days, you know, again, we sound like we all have days at our computer, but most of what I do anyway is interacting with others and the ability to, you know, have that team rapport, um, the ability just to collaborate with each other and work in a team setting is huge. Um, so if that's not something you've had an opportunity in classes to get into some of those skills, I would, you know, encourage you to find opportunities to do that. The more that you can network and build relationships with people, I think, you know, the more advantageous that will be for you. Um, the thing I enjoy about my job the most is really being a source um, for my clients to ask questions to. They can come to me and say, oh, I've looked for this answer everywhere. Is there anywhere else I haven't looked? And to have those resources and the ability to analyze their problems and really help them out is really fulfilling for me. Um, I agree, too, back in my HR days that the worst days are when you have to discipline somebody or, um, or terminations are also really hard to deal with. Um, and disciplines, it's, disciplining, it's just like, we're all adults. Do we really have to go through this? But it's all part of the managing jobs. So. Some of you guys touched on uh, minors or maybe potential <coughs> second majors that you looked into while at school here. I wanted to know if all of you had a minor and which ones, you know, that, if you benefited from that. Um, I had a minor in management, and I would say definitely that helped, um, especially as I went back to graduate school for my MBA. A lot of those classes, um, both from the econ program and the, the management classes that I had taken, um, helped build the foundation for, I can't remember the credits and the requirements, but I remember it was a nice smooth transition credit-wise and class-wise <coughs> to get into some of those classes. So, And certainly professionally, too, in the work environment, I think all of those. Uh, I would Definitely, if you have room in your schedule to, to have a minor that fits a focus that you're interested in, I would strongly encourage it. It was a good experience for me, anyway. I, I couldn't agree more. So my second major was in political science, and um, a way that that was tremendously instrumental in helping me get my first job and getting me to where I am now is that it uh, gave me a couple different opportunities. So not directly related to my major, but um, Indirectly, I studied abroad in London um, my junior year and had an internship at the Labor Party. So um, on the surface, very politically oriented, but that's honestly what got me initially really interested in where I am at now, um, transportation pricing and congestion pricing. So um, pricing a road or a, a system of roads or transportation um, Take a step back there, but anyways, pricing a road to um, to appropriately um, adapt to the the congestion and the demand for um, the use of that road in in a limited area or along um, a more refined corridors. Specifically, what I'm talking about here. That aside, so I had that experience in London, and also related to the political science program, I uh, interned in D.C. the following summer, which made for a really fun nine months um, and really fantastic experience overall. But that combined with my the skills and analysis that I was able to do with my economics background, um, I think was really gave me a strong set to move forward with. So um, whatever your niche is or whatever your side or second, secondary or equal interest is um, to economics, I'd really really encourage you to pursue that and really diversify your experience. Um, you know, I'd, I guess I, while I was in school, I got some advice conflicting to that of really focusing on economics. I, while I feel like I, I did have a focus there, that, that extra piece um, and kind of knowledge of the world from a different lens really uh, was great. So something that I look back and think about all the time is what I would have done slightly differently. Um, on the whole, I really enjoyed my experience, but the things that I would have done differently would have been diving more deeply into those side interests. So um, in environmental studies, it's a, 
um, multidisciplinary program as it is, but there are some really great courses there that I think back and like, yeah, that would it would be perfect for where I'm at now. And just um, take that leap. And if it's you know if it's not a program you feel comfortable in, or you're not even pursuing a minor, but are just really interested in the topic, it really could open a lot of doors for you. Um, so environmental studies, like I had mentioned, and computer science is also something that I don't think I could stress more about how instrumental that could be for um, just day-to-day -day work in finance, administration, um, wherever you are hoping to end up. Um, along with the uh, major in economics, I had a, a minor in business or, or management, I guess they called it. <clears throat> um, and when I did my MBA program, my, my focuses were on finance and project management. And I would agree, you know, with, with what these guys have said. Uh, I think any minor will give you some, you know, some really good background. Um, specifically, uh, I think, you know, I don't have a, a political science background, but a, a lot of the things uh, similar to the statement about team building and, and uh, you know, working well with others, a lot of the things we do are, uh, or at least the, that I do on a, a daily basis, are very... Uh, politically driven, whether it's you know consensus building or things like that, uh, you know just to to, to kind of keep that those kind of things in mind. Um, I mentioned accounting before. I started down that track and and you know didn't finish it because of my fear of being uh, stuck behind a desk or doing someone's tax, taxes my whole life. <clears throat> but looking back on it, uh, especially working uh, as a finance analyst and working in accounting, uh, an accounting background uh, would be very helpful in business regardless of where you end up, um, you know, having that really strong financial statement uh, understanding uh, is really helpful in business. Um, and then, and then uh, computer science as well. R right now, I mentioned before, I'd say 80% of our projects deal with technology or computer systems in some way. And just understanding, you know, from the software development to the installation to the configuration to the server side, uh, any knowledge you have in that area, uh, especially as technology just is exploding uh, every year, uh, that would that would be something that would be very beneficial. So I took a different approach than my panel members here. Um, I didn't have a minor. I just took classes that I thought would be fun. And I had a great time doing it. I learned how to draw. It's one of my favorite pastimes now. It's a great stress reliever. Um, I was interested in reading, so I took English classes. I took sociology classes. So, and I, you know, I still got my MBA, and I felt like the background, the economics degree gave me was more than enough to give me what I needed to, to, do, very, to do well in my MBA program, so. can start. <laughs> um, I, like I said, I just recently transi transitioned from the banking world to the insurance world. And a big part of my decision was the company that I work for now, Mohold Insurance Agency, is renowned in the community for uh, their level of service. And it was, it's just a great company to work for. Not that I grew up thinking, yes, I want to be insurance when I, <laughs> when <laughs> it's my dream job. Um, but that was the basis for my decision, and, and I haven't regretted it once. So. <clears throat> I think one of, the, one of the hardest things about uh, transitioning from one job to another um, is leaving behind those relationships you've built. And not, you know, obviously leaving friends and people you like is, is difficult, <clears throat> but it takes a lot of years, I think, to develop some of those back roads into how to get things done in an organization. And that was one of the things I really missed, you know, from being in one company for seven years and just knowing who to call, especially if it wasn't the, the person you were supposed to call because that takes a week, um, you know, to call that other person that can do it for you in a day, uh, or just having that support or, or, you know, people knowing how you do your work and, and trusting you. Um, so, so, you know, taking another one or two or however many years it takes to build up that trust and respect and uh, and some of those political back channels that you need to just to really get things done. 
uh, is probably the most difficult thing. But I think constantly changing, and, and I do it within my same company now. Uh, you know, I've said it, it, it every six to 12 months, I'm working on a different project. And so it feels like a different job to me um, almost all the time. And I, and I can't stress enough how important that is to stay fresh and, and, uh, and to experience different things and just to, to gain uh, experiences wherever you can. Um, I, I personally, I can't think of anything that would be worse than, you know, the monotony of doing the same type of thing for the same department and working on the same process uh, and just doing that day-to-day -day operational job over and over. So, you know, you're going to, it is painful for a little bit, but you're going to learn a lot going through that transition. So my biggest transition has been out of my first job back to grad school. Um, I, could say a lot of things about that. Um, I truly love to learn and love being a student, so that was kind of a, a treat there, but it, it's different than transitioning from a job to a job. Um, but one, site, one insight that I did have there that I think would be helpful um, was more that I, um, I had an entrepreneurial opportunity with, with leaving my former company in that I was able to work as a, a private consultant to the consulting company. So working as a private contractor, I should say, um, kind of doing the, the same tasks, working with the same clients, um, some more intensely or focused on specific projects than I had been as a, as a full-time standard employee. Anyways. Um, it really was pretty eye-opening for looking at the world as a private contractor or someone that's about to start their own business or hoping to do that in the future. Um, and really uh, reassuring too that it, it's really quite possible that if, if that's your interest um, to not work for a, a larger company or smaller, um, but rather your own or to go off on your own path, whatever it, whatever it may be, um, it's definitely a possibility. So. If that interests you and you're, you find yourself in a job in you know, four or five years and are interested in that but want to take your own twist on it, I'd, I'd really encourage you to do that. And all things aside, you know, insurance and stability, et cetera, um, it, all of that aside, maybe if you ever find yourself in grad school and needing a side job, be an entrepreneur, start your own company, be a contractor. A unique transition experience from job to grad school. but. I think an insight that I uh, wouldn't have if I didn't have my economics background and wasn't able to hang out with huge data sets all the time and make good things out of them. When I think of job changes, I think stress. Um, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a process. I think I kind of touched on that already. Is you, many of you will go through that for the first time soon, I'm assuming. Um, it's, it's a journey, it's work, it's time intensive, um, but it's also rewarding. The first time I chose to make a career change, I was, quite frankly, I was bored <laughs> where I was at. Um, I had kind of tapped out where I was at. Actually, a few years prior to that was when I decided to go back to grad school. I figured I loved the company I was with, but I needed a new mental challenge, so that was when I went back to school. Um, but several years after that, again, 12 years I was with my first company, um, just needed that change, um, but it's difficult as you touched on those relationships that you have with people and that comfort zone that you can develop and I think the older we get the harder that becomes um, to you know break out of those comfort zones, but it was important for me. It was a challenge I wanted to take for myself, try something different. I you know felt confident it was something I could do, move forward with it and uh, haven't regretted it at all. Um, what I did find was as we kind of talked a little bit tonight about the economics degree, it's a little bit general in the sense it's not a specific you know, job title that you might be going for. It was difficult for me in that same position also saying, what do I want to be when I grow up? I'm still saying that. But it was also nice to have options that I could look at what I was doing in one industry in the software I, you know, technology world and I was able to completely transfer what I was able to do and the skills that I had into healthcare, something completely different. So. The variety, the, the broad scope of, you know, it has its pros and cons. It's not specific. It makes it difficult to sometimes find, but it also makes it transferable, too. So you kind of got the catch-22 there, but um, if you're lucky enough to find those things that you're going after, it can work towards your favor that way, I guess, so.
I remember mine. It was the rising divorce rates, um, and I did regressions on education and divorce. What else? The levels of, of education women were attaining in divorce. Uh, I think number of kids in divorce. Um, I don't know. I ran like a thousand regressions, I think, and <laughs> and none of them were statistically significant. So, <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> uh, this might surprise you, but mine was related to transportation. It's it was testing the induced demand theory, and at its very basic core, um, essentially, it's looking at whether if you expand the capacity of a road, so um, usually by increasing the number of lanes and therefore um, the ability to move more cars through, whether that will essentially um, clear up traffic and kind of solve the problems that we're looking at um, day in and day out, or whether it will essentially induce people to travel to that road as opposed to a route that they may, may have traveled or um, decisions that they may have made otherwise, knowing that it was a congested place to be. Um, because you know it, it's a, a faster place to travel through and easier, less traffic, less, um, less of a headache, less people cutting you off, et cetera. Um, hey, why not? It's an appealing option. And so anyways, testing that um, in three different states, I believe, to see whether the, the expansion of these roads over a 10 or 15 year period actually did increase um, the vehicle miles traveled through those uh, particular geographic areas. And if I remember correctly, uh, one of my three regressions was statistically significant. And John's nodding his head back there because he was my <laughs> advisor. <laughs> I had to um, see this time and again. It was also a fantastic recommendation for grad school. <laughs> Just throwing that out there, relationships are very important. But anyways, uh, testing that theory and um, kind of really digging into some data, data sets I had no idea what I, was do, what I was doing with at the time, or at least I felt that way, but it was a great learning experience. So don't dread it, it'll be good. Boy, um, you know, mine had something to do with uh, focusing on a, a single commodity for and the impact that had on, uh, on a country's um, economy so I looked at uh, rising and falling coffee prices and its relation to Brazil's uh, economic uh, impact and and uh, you know looking back on it obviously I don't uh, use those studies my everyday job now uh, working in healthcare um, but again I, I would I would say it, it doesn't it doesn't matter really what you do it on it's all about the process and and now in my, in my job as a project manager, you really see that. Because uh, like I said before, uh, many times you're not given all the, all the pieces of information you need uh, in order to be successful in something. And it, it is, it's all, it's all about how you get to the end result, whether it's a theory, uh, a hypothesis, you know, going through those regressions and testing them, um, whether it's the planning stages of your project uh, or the project you have at work. So, uh, and you know, I, I remember the professor stressing that you know, don't stress out on what your on what your topic is. It's it's not about the topic. It's about doing the project and learning what you're going to learn throughout it. Um, you know, putting the data together, analyzing the data, and then ultimately presenting your findings, whether or not there was any findings to to find. Uh, so they're they're nodding back here because I'm sure you have students that say that all the time. So I'm a living example. I did nothing with mine, but it all worked out. I have a job now. I can barely remember mine. I think it had something to do with analyzing the privatization of Social Security, maybe. It was a long time ago. Let's try that. <laughs> do you remember that? You <laughs> and I don't really remember what the analysis even proved, but I would agree. It's, it's the process. Learning how to learn. <laughs> Good questions, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, just before we wrap this up, if we could just thank our panel members just one more time. Fill out your evaluation forms, and then there's cookies and water in the back. And you're welcome to talk to the panel. Yeah, definitely. If anybody has any questions, feel free to stop up.
everywhere in microphones, you know, don't naturally have like a rubber base that doesn't make a lot of funk. <laughs> or scraping. Right. Do you have a little bit of drive yet? I do, yeah. So my boyfriend is a big <coughs> fan of Anton's, and so I drug him with me, and uh, he's currently visiting his cousin.